Good morning. Welcome to St. Christopher's on this, the Feast of St. Mary the Virgin, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our liturgy begins on page three in your bulletin. Blessed be the one holy and living God, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray O God you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary mother of your incarnate son grant that we who have been redeemed by his blood may share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exclude in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me in the robe of righteousness. As a bridge room decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Let us join in reading portions of Psalm 34 found on page 4 in your bulletin. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you are that is saints, for those who fear him lack nothing.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. According to you, Lord Jesus. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Someday, when international travel returns to what it once was, you may find yourself going to Jerusalem. And there you may find yourself at the Kindred Valley, at the base of the Mount of Olives. There, among the many historical and religious sites, you will find a building from the 12th century in a below-ground below courtyard. As you enter it, you will come down a flight of 47 steps below to find a small church carved out of a subterranean cave. Numerous chapels branch off from the main body of the church, but on the eastern end you will find a chapel with altars belonging to the Greek and Armenian churches. Beside the altars is a small entryway into a first century tomb, surrounded by icons. There you will find a stone bench encased in glass. Welcome to the tomb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You will find no body here, for Christians tradi Christian traditions both of the East and of the West, believe that Mary, at the end of her life, was physically taken into heaven, just like the biblical Enoch and Elijah, leaving only her rope belt, or cincture, to be taken by Jesus' apostles as a relic. The Christian feast that falls today on August the 15th has many names, including the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Dormition of the Theotokos, the falling asleep of the Virgin Mary, and the Shinoyu of, of the Virgin Mary. For many cultures, today is a great day of celebration and prayer to commemorate the physical reception of Mary into heaven. On the other hand, the Episcopal Church in the Book of Common Prayer calls today, at, calls today only by a simple name, the Feast of St. Mary the Virgin, Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ likely a reflection of the reformed history and tradition of Anglicanism, which attempts to steer away from these extra-biblical Christian traditions, like the Dormition or Assumption. Nevertheless, even in the Book of Common Prayer, we see echoes of the historic tradition of Mary's death and Assumption into heaven. As today's colic says, O oh God, you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary, mother of your incarnate Son. Though many Anglicans and Episcopalians I know commemorate the Feast of St. Mary the Virgin and have a strong respect for Mary as a prominent woman in the Bible and the mother of Jesus, many are uncomfortable with celebrating the seemingly Catholic Feasts of Mary, like the Immaculate Conception the Nativity of Mary, and the Assumption or Dormition of Mary. Some echo the Protestant hesitancy for these feasts, which they argue elevate Mary to a near-divine status like Jesus, 
and places her as a mediator alongside Jesus with God. Others feel that the traditional feasts, like the Assumption, Dormition, the Immaculate Conception, are top-down proclamations made by old men, old men from long ago that bear no relevance to daily Christian life today. August 15th was fixed as the Dormition of the Theotokos of the Virgin Mary in 600 AD by the Byzantine Emperor Maurice. And in 1950, Pope Pius XII invoked papal infallibility to define the dogma of the assumption of the Blessed Virgin in his apostolic constitution, and forgive me, I'm about to butcher the Latin pronunciation here, munificitissimus Deus, as we proclaim and define it to be a dogma revealed by God that the Immaculate Mother of God, Mary Ever Virgin, when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken up body and soul into the glory of heaven. Others still feel uncomfortable because Mary is often depicted in Christian tradition as being a very passive figure. As the Christmas carol goes, Mother Mary, meek and mild. And so they would rather focus on seemingly more active figures in the Bible, like Mary of Bethany, Martha, and Mary Magdalene, rather than the Blessed Virgin. I think, though, that I am one of the weird ones when it comes to Mary in the Episcopal Church. I say the rosary, I include Mary in devotions like the Angelus in my daily prayers, and I treat August 15th and other Marian feast days like the Immaculate Conception and the Nativity as days to go to church. Maybe it is my Roman Catholic upbringing that has influenced this, but I constantly find myself asking for the intercessions of the Blessed Virgin Mary as I pray to God because Mary, above all else, was the first to know and encounter Jesus and acknowledge him as Lord and God. She was present at all stages in his life, at his birth, at his dedication at the temple, the arrival of the wise men, the flight to Egypt, the beginning of his ministry and first miracle, at the cross and at his death, at the resurrection and ascension, and finally at the day of Pentecost. Her intimacy with Jesus exposed her to the full wonders of God incarnate and the deep pain that God feels towards this sinful and broken world. Because just as Jesus was pierced for our sins, so too did the sword pierce her own soul, as Simeon tells her in the Gospel of St. Luke. She is the first to proclaim the good news of God on earth before there even was a gospel. Mary is someone who, in Scripture, is aware of herself, her world, and her situation. She ponders great things in her heart, and she proclaims and gives prophecy of God when she says in her great song, which was read today as our gospel, casting down the mighty from their thrones and uplifting the humble. Mary was a human being, and there is a historical reality around her. On the TikTok app, there was a Methodist pastor named Kelly who describes Mary through his, a historical lens as a true woman of Nazareth. Mary would have had much darker skin than we would expect, not just because of her beautiful pigmentation, but because she spent all her days outside, not in a one-room house. She would have had her fingertips and toes dyed red with henna. She dressed in the traditional tribal patterns of her family. She wouldn't have worn a veil, except when she prayed or traveled, but she would have worn a hair wrap or a net. She would have had rings on her fingers and toes and bracelets and jewelry, even anklets that shimmered and jingled when she walked, and she would have had a large nose ring. She would have been wise to know how to use the things that grew around her village, both for food and medicine. And she would have handled all the fi family finances because the women of the household were the ones who traded and bartered and kept the family going. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was not a goddess. She is not a replacement for God or for divine maternal figures of other religious traditions. 
She is just as human as the rest of us, and she existed within place, a place and time in history, but she points to the divine because she was the first to truly carry the divine presence and personhood of God within her. For these reasons and for many more, Mary continues to be honored and venerated throughout nearly all Christian traditions. Far from being a dogmatic proclamation from emperors and popes, devotion to Mary began from the bottom up, from everyday people like you and me. The first generations of Christians sought to understand Jesus more by understanding the people around him, such as the apostles, his family, and especially his mother. By knowing Mary more and the relationship she had with Jesus and with God, we can understand Jesus all the more. The earliest evidence for the Feast of the Dormition or the Assumption came from local celebrations around the city of Ephesus in modern-day Turkey sometime around the 3rd century AD. But some scholars say that Marian devotion emerges even earlier in the late 1st and 2nd centuries. Many early Christians associated the woman in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, who is clothed with the sun, who has the moon under her feet, and who is crowned with the stars as the glorified Mary in heaven. Mary's tomb in Jerusalem was a site of pilgrimage in the 5th century AD, which brought people from all around the Mediterranean world to it. When the Council of Nicaea, which created the creed of the church that we will say later today, affirmed that Jesus was fully divine and fully human, that, that affirmation was an affirmation of the human condition and personhood. Jesus' humanity comes from Mary as her son. And what we say about Jesus' humanity relates to Mary's humanity, which therefore relates to our own humanity, because just like Mary, we are human. Jesus' humanity is therefore linked to his divinity, and so too are the promises of that divinity open to us. Jesus became human so that humanity could become more like God. Mary, through her reception into heaven at her death, becomes the guarantor of our own future glorification, and this is why the Dormition or the Assumption matters. Mary points to Jesus, and Jesus points to Mary, and therefore Jesus points to the rest of us, because like Mary, we are only human. The historical Mary has been transposed, interpreted, and depicted it by many cultures across the world in their own image. These include the Black Madonnas of Eastern Europe, the paintings of Mary as Empress of China, or as a divine figure or semi-divine figure in other traditions, and Mary as the indigenous Aztec virgin of Guadalupe in Mexico. In art, wherever Mary is, Jesus is close at hand. Jesus brings into a new creation and a new people united with him. And as, Jesus, as Mary is Jesus' mother, Mary too becomes mother of a new people. The early church called Mary the second Eve, mirroring how the first Eve was the mother of the human race. The new people that is brought into being by Christ is the church. And just like how Mary carried Christ within her, so too are we called to carry the presence of Christ within us. Though not all of us can get pregnant and carry a child to term, we can still carry Christ and be both Christ-bearer and God-bearer to others in this world. Mary carried Jesus not only as a mother, but as a prophetic voice for justice, a person who was wise and knowledgeable in the world around her and in faith. She was the impetus for God's abundant love in this world and for the wedding at Cana, where Jesus' first miracle occurred. She was a witness to the suffering of others, and she was inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
and she is one who is glorified by Jesus as a sign of the final restoration and reconciliation of all things in this world. The Mary of history becomes the universal model for our own faith. So whether we call today the Dormition of the Theotokos, the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, the Shinoyu of Mary, or even just simply the Feast of St. Mary the Virgin, we find ourselves this day encountering how Christ manifests his presence in life, in the life and death of those who bear witness to God in and amongst humanity. Mary was the first to carry the presence of Christ through the world as the first to witness the beginning of a new era and a new people with the church. She points to Christ and Christ points to her. And in this dynamic and relationship, we find the completion and perfection of our own humanity. Because Jesus chose to embrace our humanity with all of its beauties and all of its flaws by accepting Mary as his human mother. That humanity is glorified by Jesus' presence. And it is here in Mary's glorification in heaven that we find the hope of our own future glory. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed, which can be found in the inside back cover of your Book of Common Prayer in your pews, the red book in your pews. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of God, eternally begotten by the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Savior, works revolutions in the earth and turns the world upside down. Let us proclaim, proclaim the greatness of the Lord and rejoice in our God, praying to the Holy and Mighty One, saying, Lord, have, Lord, mercy. have mercy. For the God-fearing, that God look with favor on them from generation to generation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For justice in all the earth, that with all a mighty arm, God scatter the proud, cast down the haughty, and lift up the lowly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the hungry, that they may be fed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who hunger after righteousness, that they may be filled with good things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the just distribution of the wealth of the world, that none go hungry while others are surfeited, surfeited. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Jews, the descendants of Abraham, 
that they may be faithful to their ancient covenant with God and that we with them inherit the promises of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer. Richard Watts and Susan Lum, Chris and Robin Lynch, Ben and Grace Maddox and their Ohana. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pray for Dan, Gay, Hank, Josie, Mark, Tom, Adrian, James, and their Ohana, Draven, Alita, Peter, Jeff, Christy, Edna, and for those we name now either silently or alive. We pray for the people of Haiti and Afghanistan and those affected by devastating wildfires in Greece. We pray for the nation and all in authority. Protect all men and women who serve our nation in faraway places. We pray for those who have died, especially Verna Swati, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. For all the people of God, that with Blessed Mary, the Virgin Mother of our Lord, and with all the saints, we rejoice as children and heirs of God, redeemed by Christ her Son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. We proclaim the greatness of the Lord, and we rejoice in God our Savior praising God and his Son, our Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning. And welcome everyone here at St. Christopher's on this Assumption of St. Mary. Um, James, thank you so much for a wonderful and intriguing and fascinating sermon. James has been with us for the last month and unfortunately has to go back to Toronto this coming Tuesday to finish up his, graduate, his uh, doctoral work there. It has been a real pleasure, James, having you with us. Thank you again for all you've done.
birthdays and anniversaries this week. We are celebrating Nancy Perry and Beverly Malahoff, Kevin Shimon and Sarah Gall, among others, and Emily. Our granddaughter Zolani is three today. Well, congratulations, that's wonderful. Bill, is Kathy coming up with you? Since we're celebrating, uh, since we're celebrating Mary today, I wanted to acknowledge my mother, who also was named Mary, and was born today in 1922, passed away three years ago. I also like to acknowledge my amazing father. He was born on August 19th, 1922, passed away 2014. And this is for my dad. I was born in 1922 and August the 14th, and he passed away also. I guess since you already gave it away that it's my son Kevin's birthday, I better come up and. <laughs> it was yesterday. Whoa, 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 whoa. Have you got anybody else since you're oh, up here in the back? My, so open, so. <laughs> Join me in our prayer of, in our birthday prayer for birthdays and thanksgivings and for those we remember and love. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in Hawaiian, haole laha now, aho o mai kai. Okay, do you want to do this first or last? Okay, all right. Relk family, will you come forward please? This is actually her basket, Elaine's basket, so I'm giving it back to her, but it also reminded me that I could put something in there. I promised all uh, recent comers uh, who came to the King's party uh, a gift. So inside here you will find four little gifts. So there you go. And thanks to the Relk family for all they've done and continue to do to help our St. Christopher's Ohana. Eric. So if I'm up front, what are we coming up to? Workday. Work day. So 28th of August is our work day, our quarterly work day. And usually we're whacking and sacking. Um, I, I have to say we're gonna be at thinning and trimming. So we've got the outside pretty much at a maintenance level. So give yourselves a big hand. Okay. The good news is that means we can now start looking at what's going on on the inside. There's chipped paint, chipped wood, maybe the pews. So um, as we start, those of you who maybe have been holding back your talents, next workday we also want to start focusing on what are the things we can either fix as volunteers or take to the vestry for professional work. I know Mary Alice, you had kindly volunteered to, uh, to, to do that effort when you were done with your, your efforts, so the other efforts, et cetera. So I invite you all to come, bring your chainsaws, bring your clippers, bring some work clothes, bring a piece of paper and a tablet, and uh, we'll continue to bring the ship into good shape. Thank you very much. Eric, thank you. Our junior warden extraordinaire. I bring your attention to the announcements page, the blue page in your service insert. Uh, Eric's already mentioned the work day. The most important thing is about the beach mass and picnic scheduled for the 29th of this month. Due to the COVID numbers increasing, the Delta variant and other variants, that is going to be postponed and is tentatively rescheduled for Sunday, September 19th. And we will stay in touch with everyone in the St. Christopher's family and the parish as the numbers go along over the next two or three weeks. Again, that is going to be rescheduled tentatively from the 29th of, Se of August to the 19th of September. And uh, two other things on the back page. 
One is the live streaming, if you'll take a look at that. There are many people in our St. Elizabeth, St. Christopher's family <laughs> who stay connected to us on Sundays by our live streaming. That's how they remain part of our family and active in their faith. If anybody is interested in helping with the live streaming process, please contact Mary Ann or Larry Staney, and they will help take you through it. As my wife tells me, if you can send a text, you can do this. Franz, can you send a text? Okay. Billy, can you send a text? All right. Marianne, I'm doing what I can. And the other things, having mentioned the RELCs, the last announcement on the bottom of the back page is about our yard sale, which is going to be on Saturday, September the 11th, COVID permitting. You've got the information there. We will be in touch with you with more information as we go along, especially depending on what happens with the numbers. But right now, that is set for Saturday, September the 11th. And we really do expect that to go on because it's very easy to distance from one another um, and it will all be outside. Exactly. Um, our offering bowls are up at the corners and there's one at the back. When you come up for communion, as always, come up on the side and go back to the center and we have hand sanitizer on the two little tables that are set with the offering bowls if you would like to use that when you come up. Let us with joy and thanksgiving present to the Lord the gifts of our life and labor. I'm just going to say a few words before the song. Um, the song is called I'll Go Tell Elizabeth. It's um, set um, after the angel visits Mary and tells her that she's going to be pregnant and going to give birth to Jesus. And of course, as we heard in the sermon uh, by James, she was human. So for her, the, her life was turned upside down. And so often during this pandemic, I get reminded of that song. Um, like just this past week, we were practicing with the choir. Um, and now because of the high numbers, we cannot have any live music anymore. Uh, any live singing anymore. <laughs> so when you hear my voice today, it's all pre-recorded. Um, no one is singing live in the service. And uh, I was taught a mime for this song two years ago. Uh, it was supposed to me, be me singing and miming at the same time. Today, um, you, if, as I said, you will only hear the pre-recorded voice and I'm miming to it. It was also not designed for, designed for having my half of my face covered. I'm hoping the point comes across anyway.
go talk to Joseph. But I've talked to Joseph, but Joseph's the man. So many things a woman can know that a man never can. Joseph is practical. Joseph is buried by things of his own. And talking with Joseph is sometimes no better than being alone. Being alone. I go tell Elizabeth.
We are so truly blessed here at St. Christopher's. Ina, thank you so much. And I would also like to offer on our behalf a prayer for James and his travels. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, especially James. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Mary, St. Christopher, King Kamehameha IV, Queen Emma, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. given for the people of God. Let us take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Epolekako. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And since you mentioned the power of the spirit in that prayer, with our final hymn, our closing hymn, This Little Light of Mine, feel free, any gestures or clapping that you would like to do during the hymn, feel free to go to that place. Thank you.